So you're here because you need to know why vitamin A is a must in your healthy skincare routine. Let's get right to it. So I'm gonna start off with what exactly vitamin A does for our skin. Why do we need it? What benefits does it have for us? Vitamin A helps to promote cellular turnover in our skin. So what exactly does that mean? Pretty much that it helps our skin to exfoliate. It helps to clear up the debris, the dead skin cells. It increases the rate of that. This results in smoother, less bumpy, less textured, and more radiant skin. Vitamin A will get you there. It also helps to promote collagen production. Another benefit of using vitamin A in our skincare routine is that it can increase what is called fibroblasts. And so this is what's responsible. It's like deep in our tissues, deep in our skin tissues, and it's responsible for keeping our skins looking firm and healthy. That results in less wrinkles and less fine lines in our skin. I'm sure you've heard of retinoids, retinol, retinol. All those are different type of vitamin A derivatives, retinaldehyde. <laughs> They're vitamin A derivatives. Um, and yes, they do help with the treatment of acne and prevention of acne as well. So what this do, as I said before, it helps with the cell turnover. So it increases the rate of when, how your skin is pretty much exfoliating. And so this helps to unclog our pores, keeps our, our pores um, less clogged, as I said before. And this also helps in, with increasing the penetration of other products and ingredients that we put on our skin, which is the purpose of exfoliating your skin. It helps to, for your skin to better absorb and for the ingredients to better penetrate your skin. So that is another benefit of using vitamin A in your skincare routine. Vitamin A is also great for hyperpigmentation. Hyperpigmentation that's sun-induced, acne marks, scar marks, things like that. Hyperpigmentation, it helps to lighten and fade hyperpigmentation. And then also with vitamin A, as I mentioned briefly before, it does help with treating fine lines and wrinkles. So with that collagen production that I mentioned, how it induces the production of collagen, this in result will help those who would like to prevent or treat fine lines and wrinkles. Vitamin A is also very good at UV damage repairing. So um, we have structural damage that happens when we are exposed to the sun. And so whenever we use vitamin A, it helps to repair those type of damages that, we, that may have been caused from the sun and from the environment. So in turn, pretty much, it's very good at anti-aging as we mentioned before, it helps with fine lines and wrinkles. Vitamin A can help tighten the skin back up and it increases the fibroblasts, it increases collagen production, so it can firm the skin back up. Vitamin A is also really good at improving the skin's hydration. So because it helps to repair the barrier, it helps to help your skin barrier retain more moisture. We've talked about the pros of vitamin A for your skin, but what are some of the cons? What are some of the side effects that you experience with vitamin A? Some of you all may have, or you may not have, if you have tried any like retinols or retinols or retinaldehydes, <laughs> all these different vitamin A derivatives, you know that they can be very irritating to the skin. That is one of the cons. So vitamin A and its derivatives like retinol and the prescription retinoids can cause skin irritation. That is why it's recommended when you're first starting off, they have different strengths that you can start with. There's over the counter, there's prescriptions, but you want to start low with vitamin A derivatives because they are very irritating. Because of this irritation, they can also they also cause sun sensitivity. Using a vitamin A derivative on your skin can cause sun sensitivity. It makes your skin more susceptible to burning easier. So it is very, 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 very 
crucial to wear sunscreen daily when you are using a vitamin A derivative. Even though you should be using one daily in the first place, <laughs> but especially when you're using something that's irritating to your skin barrier, when you're first starting, your skin kind of has to build up to it you do want to make sure that you're wearing sunscreen. Another con with using vitamin A and some of their derivatives is that they are not recommended to use while pregnant or breastfeeding. So you definitely don't want, you want to avoid products that have um, vitamin A derivatives like retinoids, retinol, retinaldehydes, all those are not really recommended. If you are wanting to try out a vitamin A derivative, then you just want to make sure you consult with your dermatologist to see what the best options are for you. And of course, there are options over the counter that you can start with um, that we are going to get into later on in the video. So just stay tuned, okay? I hope you still have your snacks, all right? And your drinks. Hopefully you're drinking some green tea or some water, you know, something refreshing with some antioxidants in there, some kombucha, kombucha. How do you say that? Sip on something good, okay? <clears throat> but no judgment. Okay, since we touched on vitamin A derivatives, let's get into what are all the different forms of vitamin A derivatives. Vitamin A derivatives, or AKA retinoids. So when we talk about the derivatives of vitamin A, all of these are different forms of vitamin A, which is in its pure form, retinoic acid. So we're going, we're going to review the different types that are derivatives of retinoic acid or vitamin A. So there are different types of vitamin A derivatives, some that are offered over the counter, some that are prescription only. So let's get right into it. Retinol is what we're going to be starting off with. And this one is over the counter. You want to try out a retinol and you may start with an over the counter one at first, which is always a good idea because why have to get a prescription if the over the counter one may work very well for you. So retinol is less potent than the prescription ones, of course, because this one is offered over the counter, but it is often less irritating than the prescription forms. Then we have retinol, also known as retinaldehyde. In terms of potency, retinol or retinaldehyde is a little more potent than retinol. But what that means is that it can be a little more irritating than retinol, but not as irritating as the prescriptions. So retinol palmitate is also another form of vitamin A that you may see in some of your over-the-counter products. So it is less potent than the ones we've already spoken of that are over-the-counter. So the retinaldehyde and the retinol. So now we're going to go into tretinoin. Tretinoin is one of the common ones that you may have heard and it is a prescription um it is a prescription vitamin a derivative tretinoin also known as retinoic acid is actually the pure form of vitamin a it is a form of retinoic acid then of course this one is going to be more irritating to your skin so next we have isotretinoin, which is commonly known as Accutane, which many of you may have heard of if you haven't. It is a prescription oral medication that is usually prescribed for those with severe acne. It's highly effective, but it comes with quite some heavy hitting side effects. It's something that you have to be monitored. You for sure have to be monitored by a healthcare professional when using this medication or this prescription and it comes with um, having to like for women you have to have a for each time you feel it you have to have a pregnancy test done because it can cause birth defects um, also for men as well there's testings and um, things that have to be done each month when it is filled and of course we've heard of you may have heard of adapalene or that's the generic name for the brand different. So this is more of a newer form of a vitamin A derivative of a retinoid. 
that is now offered over the counter. So it is still a little more irritating, but it's less irritating than tretinoin or the isotretinoin. And then we have Taz Tazarotene, Tazarotene, I think that's how you say it, <laughs> which um, some of the brands that you may be familiar with is Tazarac, Avage, and Fabior. <laughs> if I'm saying it wrong, I'm sorry. Tazarotene is used for acne and psoriasis. So these are vitamin A derivatives that can be irritating to your skin. Those that are offered over the counter are less irritating, but they do have some that are um, still a little more irritating. So of course, when you are using a retinoid product, you want to start slow and low. You always want to make sure you are wearing sunscreen, sun protection when you are using a vitamin A derivative. And then of course, these products can be, have they do have a lot of interactions with other ingredients. So you do want to make sure that you're being careful when mixing your skincare products, when using different skincare products, when layering, that's the word. Please do not mix your skincare products. Side note, don't do that. Don't. But when layering your products, you do want to be careful when it comes to retinols, um, ret um, retinoids, because they do interact with a good amount of other ingredients. So a lot of times it's recommended not to use other ingredients when using this um, that day. Uh, you just want to stay clear of everything else and just use your retinoid by itself. 